In today's video, we're going to talk about how to write a pipeline script in Jenkins. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. Around December of 2014, the Jenkins project introduced scripted syntax pipelines. And around February of 2017, declarative pipelines made their entrance. Now, why do you want to use pipeline? You have two different syntaxes. You can choose to use declarative or you can choose to use scripted. Back in 2015, before declarative came out, all you had was scripted. But once declarative was GA in roughly February of 2017, that gave you a better way to construct a vast majority of your pipelines. Now, what we're going to look at today is a very basic way if you've never created a pipeline script before. I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do that within Jenkins itself. Now, you may be asking, what is a Jenkins pipeline? Well, Jenkins pipeline is a suite of plugins that makes it possible to create the definition of a job within a file. If you've used Jenkins in the past, you may be familiar with freestyle jobs or Maven jobs, or there's numerous job types. But pipeline is the only one that makes it possible to be able to save the definition of your job to an SCM such as Git. So you'll be able to manage the definition of your jobs as code. Let's talk about what we're using today to do our demonstration. I have a Jenkins controller running 2.277.2 when it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. And also to this controller, we have attached an agent. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. What we're going to do today is we're going to create two sample jobs. I'm going to say create a job, and I'm going to say scripted pipeline, just so you can see how to do it. I'm going to click on pipeline and click OK. Now remember, I was just talking about saving the definition of your jobs to an SCM. We're not going to do that today. That's a little more advanced if you're just now getting into it. I want you to understand how you can quickly create a pipeline job. And you can look at other videos to understand how to save that and pull it back into a job for later usage. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down to the section that is called Pipeline Script. And in fact, there's a little helper over here on the right-hand side that says, try a sample pipeline. Let's go ahead and click on scripted pipeline. And what you'll see here is this is a very pretty advanced type pipeline. Let's go ahead and simplify this a lot. So let's go ahead and just leave first the node block at the top, and we're going to leave a stage, stages where material type work happens. So think of material as you'll see in a minute. And here, what we want to do, instead of results, I'm just going to say, hello. And I'm also going to say, echo, hello, world. And I'll change these to singles, doubles. Doesn't really matter for this use case. Let's go with singles for today. OK, so now we have node, stage, echo, hello, world. Let's click on Save and click on Build Now. And you'll see here that it ran. And you can see that it says running on Agent 1. That is our agent that we have connected to our controller. And then it echoes out, Hello World. So let's take a look at that one more time. We have roughly five lines that gives us a Hello World. Node says, make sure this runs on an agent. My stage is where the what's happening in this job. And then here is the actual thing that's happening. In this case, it's an echo. Now, let's create a declarative job. So we'll click on Dashboard, New Item, and we'll call this Declarative Pipeline. We'll click on Pipeline and click OK. Again, we'll scroll right back down to our pipeline script section. We're going to try a hello world. And this hello world 
is exactly the same as what we just did with our scripted syntax pipeline. Now, scripted syntax, it was five lines. This one is roughly, with extra spaces here, 11 lines. So let's go ahead and save it just to prove that when this one runs, it does the exact same thing as our scripted syntax. Let's go ahead and click on Build Now. And when we take a look at the output, we can see that it ran on Agent 1, and it also echoed out Hello World. This is the exact same output as we saw with our scripted syntax pipeline. This has been a short video just to give you a little bit of information if you've never seen what a Jenkins pipeline is before. You saw that we had two different syntaxes that we can use. We had scripted syntax and we have declarative syntax. In that time between scripted syntax and declarative syntax, Obviously, all we had to work with was scripted syntax. But once declarative syntax went GA, that gave us other options in how to construct our pipelines. Since the release of declarative pipeline, here's the basic recommendations. Start with declarative syntax. When you start to run into some issues with declarative syntax, whatever that might be, we've covered that in other videos you would then add on a shared library. Go check out the shared library video that's listed down in the description, or it may be up here just to my right. Also, if the combination of declarative and shared library starts to fall apart for you as well, you've taken it to the edge, then and only then should you completely construct a pipeline using scripted syntax. The reason why is scripted syntax can be more complex. Yes, it is a little bit shorter as compared to what we saw in declarative. A word of warning. Sometimes people will treat scripted syntax as if it's a general purpose programming language. It is not. Scripted syntax, as well as declarative syntax, are meant for CI purposes only. If you need to integrate with other systems, use a real programming language. Go, Java, your pick doesn't matter. Write whatever that functionality is within a real programming language that you can put real tests around. And then once you have that written, whether that's a simple script, maybe you're writing a bash script, or maybe a PowerShell script, or something maybe even more complex as a full client in Go, now you have something that you can call from the command line. Once you are able to test all of that from the command line, then it's very simple. Whether you're using scripted or declarative to simply make an SH call if you're on Linux or a BAT call or PowerShell call if you're on Windows to make the call to that tooling that you have written. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, Give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.